Hello. Recording. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the uh, regular meeting of the Sio Township Planning Commission on May 10th, 2021. Uh, we are using the Zoom webinar platform for members of the public who have joined us by video or phone. Your microphones are muted, but will be opened when appropriate in order to minimize disruptions to the meeting and connectivity problems. Only members of the board the commission will have video. Applicants and staff have video access, but have been asked to turn off their cameras until called upon. At that time, they may use the share screen capabilities if appropriate. All chat and question and answer boxes have been disabled. The meeting is being held via video conference in compliance with the Open Meetings Act. All members of the public body and members of the public participating electronically will be considered present at the meeting and may participate as a physically present at at this meeting. All members of the Planning Commission are participating from uh, Sio Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. If members of the body, uh, not applicants or staff, are participating from elsewhere, they need to so, say so identifying the county, municipality, and state. There will be an opportunity for the public to speak during the public comment. Um, instructions for public comment will be provided at that time. So, um, with that, we're calling our meeting to order, and it is 7.03, um, and if we could have a, a roll call, Secretary Chang. Okay, Holland. Present from Dexter Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Moore. Here, Seattle Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Sharma. Here. Sile Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Corto. Present in Sio Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Hyde. Present, Washtenaw County, Sio Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Chang, present, Sio Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan, and Culbertson. Present, Sio Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Great. We have a quorum. We have a quorum. Uh, we'll move to adoption of the agenda. Is um, there a motion to adopt our agenda? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Moore, supported by Commissioner Chang. Is there any discussion, any revisions, changes? Seeing none, Secretary Chang, please call a roll call vote to adopt the agenda. Okay, Holland. Yes. Moore. Yes. Sharma. Yes. Corto. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Chang. Yes. Culbertson. Yes. Okay, adopted 7 0. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is communications and correspondence. The Planning Commission did receive correspondence from our um, uh, James Fink, our township attorney, regarding the East Delhi private road. And I'm not sure if that made it into the packet or not, but it is a uh, publicly available document. So I just wanted to note that we did receive that. It is not on the agenda this evening, however. Any other communications? Commissioner Coteau. So as I mentioned last time, I have been contacted by some residents of East Delhi who submitted in writing a number of questions, which I have submitted to our township attorney for his thoughts on them. And I'm compiling his answers and have further requested some answers from Mr. Lewan. And once those are all compiled, I'll share that with the whole commission. Thank you, Commissioner Corteau. Commissioner Holland. 
Could you fill us in on your discussions with them? I have not had any discussions okay. with them. Just curious if there's something we missed. Thank you. No, it's all a, a, at um, Chair Culbertson's request and supported by the township attorney. I am simply uh, responding to written communication. So they and concerns to me in writing and I'm gathering information to respond to their questions and concerns. Be, because I'm a, a trustee as well as on the planning commission, I, I do have, um, I feel like I have an obligation to interact with residents around their questions and concerns, it, it, which puts me slightly differently than um, the ex parte requirements for the plan commission so I'm, I'm doing my best to walk this line between these two roles that's real difficult yeah and appreciate you being um, open about all everything and that's good policy good practice any other um, correspondence or communications seeing none um, presentations requested by the Planning Commission, we have none. So we will move to uh, the public comment portion of the meeting. And um, uh, we'll start with online participants um, and the, the public comment portion, uh, we do not have a public hearing um, this evening. So public comment can be um, any member of the public who wishes to address the Planning Commission. And uh, we'll start with online participants. You can indicate that you would like to provide a comment by clicking the raise your hand button found at the bottom of your screen if joining by computer or the top of your screen if joining by tablet. Your microphone will be enabled one at a time until all online participants have the, had the opportunity to speak once. When you are unmuted by the host, you will see a dialogue box that says stay muted or unmute myself. Choose unmute myself if you wish to speak. Second, anyone who has phoned in will have the opportunity to speak. I will ask for callers to speak by raising their hands by pressing star nine when they, and then press star six to unmute. Callers must take turns until each call wishing to speak has had the opportunity to speak once. Comments uh, shall be listed, uh, shall be limited to three minutes unless you're representing an organization and then the time limit is five minutes. Um, if a participant's comment results in disruptive behavior exceeding the five minute time limit for comments potentially interfering with the conduct of the meeting, the Open Meetings Act does allow for a person to be excluded from the meeting for a breach of the peace actually committed during the meeting. I will first ask the host to unmute to mute you if you are engaging in disruptive behavior. If you continue with disruptive behavior, I will issue a warning that your behavior must cease or you will be removed from the meeting. If that continues, I will ask the host to remove you from the meeting. With that, I'll entertain a motion to open up uh, public comment. Uh, Secretary Chang. Oh, uh, we need a motion first, sorry. Moved by Commissioner Hyde, support by Commissioner Sharma. Any discussion? Secretary Chang, a roll call vote, please. Yeah, Holland. Yes. Moore. Muted. You're muted, uh, Commissioner Moore. We'll, yeah, let's... we'll get back to Commissioner Moore. Sharma. Yes. Corteau. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Yes. Chang, yes. Shall we try uh, Culbertson? Yes. Well, should we call back to Commissioner Moore? Abstain. Yeah, abstain. it must be okay. approved 6-0. an abstention, yeah. All right, with that, um, we will open uh, public comment. Please uh, indicate by raising your hand or pressing star nine. Mr. Luan. Yep, so we have um, five people in attendance and um, I see a hand going up for Alice Owings. So I'm going to uh, hit the allow to speak uh, button for 
Ms. Owings and um, Ms. Owings, just uh, unmute yourself and you have the floor. Thank you, Doug. Um, I'm so sorry. I listened in to the master plan discussion on Thursday night, but had technical difficulties and wasn't able to participate in the public comments. Um, I just was wondering about a comment and forgive me, I don't know, Doug, if it was you that made it, but it was along the lines of uh, for considering development along Jackson Avenue, I believe, that if needed, we could renegotiate our contract with the city of Ann Arbor relative to water and sewer. And um, I just was wondering if sort of that is something that goes on behind the scenes to sort of help inform the master plan because I had sort of always kind of understood that the city of Ann Arbor was really at sort of capacity with respect to in particular sewer and wastewater management. Um, and I wasn't so sure that that was something that um, that would be as easy as simply going back to the city of Ann Arbor to get additional capacity. So um, I know you don't take questions, you know, that kind of thing, but I just hoped that as you know, that comment was made um, to understand if that was sort of helping to inform the plans around uh, the master plan. Thank you very much. And thank you for Thursday night. It was it was really a, an interesting opportunity to listen. Thank you. Um, we have four other folks. I don't see any other hands up. I don't know if any of the other folks for items not on the agenda, uh, if they have any other comments, go ahead and um, uh, raise your hand. I do, do you have anyone see... on the phone? There's no, there's no, uh, no, there are no phone uh, participants today. All right. With that, then I'll entertain a motion to close public comment. Moved by Commissioner Chang, support by Commissioner Hyde. Any further discussion? That a roll call vote, please. Colin. Yes. Moore. Yes. Sharma. Yes. Corto. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Chang. Yes. Culbertson. Yes. Okay, it's close. Seven zero. And with that, uh, public comment is closed at 7.13. All right, moving on to our business session. We have no advertised public hearings, no unfinished business uh, and two items of new business. So we will move forward with SP number 21004, uh, pre-send minor major PUD amendment. And uh, with that, we'll um, hear from our um, applicant and then our uh, planning consultant. So if you could promote the uh, or unmute our um, applicant if there is an applicant present. Um, yep, I think it's um, I will promote them to panelists, which is um, and, uh, and sorry if I butchered the name, please correct me. Yep. And also, if there's anyone else, I know this is the applicant, um, Michael Prasand. And um, if if you have someone else, uh, I see there's other people in attend uh, in, uh, in the audience. So if there's anyone else that you would like us to promote to panelists, just let me know. No, that's okay. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes, we can. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Welcome. My name, first name is Michael. Last name is Prasand. Yeah. Um, so want to thank you all for taking the time to uh, review my application. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking to, I should start by saying I live in Trail Woods of Ann Arbor. I moved um, with my wife and my young son in September of 2019. So we've been here about a year and a half, if not a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> and we would like to do a patio in our backyard. And, you know, we have this setback in our backyard that 
seems kind of restrictive to me. Um, there is nothing behind our backyard other than HOA property. And uh, I've gotten the approval of the HOA to move forward with the, what I'm proposing, um, but obviously want to be a good citizen and um, go through the proper channels and, and um, get your all recommendation. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things that, I, that are kind of uh, adding to the challenge. Um, my house is about four, if not more, four feet off the ground. And so I need steps to get down to the patio. And if you look at the drawing, uh, really, however I orient the steps, the steps take you just about to the point of the setback. Um, and so uh, it, it, it kind of becomes an awkward configuration from a, from a layout standpoint. Um, the other issue is that, you know, the setback is on an angle compared to the house. So we have the, uh, a pretty tight corner. Um, and so I, I think my proposal is reasonable because the patio will obviously be at grade and I'm sticking within my, uh, within my plot of land, obviously. Um, there's still space between the end of the patio and the end of the plot. So, you know, there's some setback built in and uh, the HOA is okay with it. So um, those, are, those are some of my thoughts. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions and, and hear your, your all discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Luan. Okay, um, thank you. So this is a, this is a, a case that the Planning Commission has to act in a way like a Zoning Board of Appeals and that if this was in a development that was not a PUD, this would simply be going to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance request. But because this is a PUD, the Trailwoods Project, um, any kind of encroachment and setbacks we've always treated like it was a uh, amendment, well, it is an amendment to the PUD because all of these uh, setbacks, building envelopes were all really established as part of the original part of the PUD when it was developed. So any kind of change to that requires this process we're going through right now. And just so the planning commission knows this might be the first one we've done for many of you, uh, this is a two-step process. So the first step is to determine if the PUD is a major PUD amendment or a minor PUD amendment. So there's really two motions that you'll be making tonight. And the first is, is a determination if this is a major or minor amendment. If you believe it's a, a major amendment, and I, in my memo of March 30th, there are, um, there are a number of criteria that uh, that, you know, if it meets one of these criteria, it's a major amendment. And so those things are like, um, well, I'll just read them, a change in the concept of the development, a change in the use of the development or character of the development, a change in the type of dwelling unit, a change in the number of dwelling units, a change in non-residential floor area, or a change in lot coverage or floor area ratio of the entire PUD. Uh, and then also a change in the character of any street or function of any street, a uh, change in land area set aside for common space, or a change in building height. So if you look at all of those things, if any one of those was determined to be met, uh, pretty much the proceedings would stop at this point and we would have to uh, have a public hearing. And there would be a public hearing held and all the neighbors within 300 feet would be notified by mail. Um, and they'd be able to comment on this. Um, if it's not determined to be a major amendment, if it's determined to be a minor amendment, and minor amendments are two items as listed in the zoning ordinance. The first is a change in residential floor space. 
and the second is minor variations in layout, which do not constitute a major change. If the Planning Commission determines that it's a minor PUD amendment, then you can we can continue the discussion and then ultimately make a motion whether you want to approve or deny the request. So even if you approve it as a minor amendment, that doesn't mean the Planning Commission is recommending approval of the request. And then you have to go on to kind of the second step in this process. Um, so that, you know, that's, that's the process. As you see on page two of our report, uh, it's our opinion that that what the applicants do, I mean, they're proposing an at-grade patio, that it doesn't uh, meet the criteria for a major amendment. So we don't believe that this has to go through the full-blown uh, uh, rehearing and all of those steps, like a major PUD amendment. A major PUD amendment typically would be something like a developer was adding lots to a development. They were you know, installing a new road they were doing something very different than what was, you know, taking property out of open space, um, converting it into, into houses or buildings or something like that. Um, this really isn't, this isn't that. I mean, this is a, really it's a setback encroachment. Um, and so it, it, it would appear to us, of course, it's a planning commission's determination, but it would appear to us that this is a minor PUD amendment. And, uh, uh, if the planning commission was to agree with that, again, we could go on and discuss whether this should be approved or not. Um, we do uh, note in our re our report that um, uh, you know the applicant does show the 25 foot setback on the material that they provided. They do indicate the encroachment of the deck. Um, we indicate that, or I should back up if. The zoning ordinance does allow 10 feet encroachments into the rear yard setback. So, even so, without coming to the planning commission, the applicant, if they could rear, apparently there's an elevation issue, and perhaps we can discuss that more. But if they could stay within the the allowed 10 foot patio or deck encroachment, the ordinance allows some encroachment, they wouldn't need to have any PUD amendment. And we, we indicate that it, it appears that, you know, there's enough room on the property to do that. And that, that should perhaps be some additional questions directed to the applicant. Um, so they're asking for an additional nine feet into the rear yard setback, you, you get 10, uh, for decks and patios, they're lo they're looking for an additional nine feet. Um, so that's the uh, that's really the information we had asked for um, confirmation from the homeowners association that they were accepting of this change. And since we wrote this letter, um, the applicants provided some email correspondence with the homeowners association, and they appear to be on board with the uh, with the change. So uh, with that, again, there's two things that we have to do tonight. One, determine if it's a major or minor amendment. The second is to determine if uh, the Planning Commission is interested in um, uh, allowing this encroachment. Um, you know, the one thing I would say generally, and it is uh, this is a brand new subdivision, and um, uh, I would just be careful allowing this kind of encroachment on a specific lot, unless there are very specific circumstances that we can uh, note in, in any kind of a motion. If you, if you made a motion to approve this, you should note some very specific conditions like the open space across from this property. There's no home nearby, you know, things like that. Odd, maybe the odd angle of the rear yard, yard. because what I, what I don't, or what I wouldn't want to have happen is that uh, this be granted and then the planning commission get inundated with PUD amendment requests from this subdivision. Um, you know that you know, we reviewed this. We reviewed the building envelopes. The developer assured us that everything would fit in, into the building envelope. And uh, now, pretty early on, we've got a PUD um, a, a amendment being requested by the by the applicant. So that that's my only caution is that if this is approved, we have to make sure that it's somewhat unique so that we're not setting a precedent that other homeowners can just show up and get, you know, have this sort of a deck 
approved, um, you know, in areas that, that we weren't, that this wasn't supposed to happen. So uh, with that, um, I'll turn it back to uh, Chairperson Culbertson. And if you guys have any uh, questions, I'd be happy to try to answer about the process or the implications if this is granted. Thank you, Mr. Lan. Um, just as a process, I'd like to um, deal first with it if it's a major or minor. And then after that, um, if it is uh, declared a minor amendment, then we will um, open up discussions and uh, questions of the applicant and Mr. Luan. Um, so the, the first motion would be um, whether uh, given the criteria, um, whether uh, we determine it's a major or a minor um, amendment to the PUD. Commissioner Cotel. Um, I, I thought I heard Commissioner Moore. It, it seems I to was me just going to ask a question of uh, Doug Luan before. Um, if, is if this about the here, major or minor? I, we have to determine whether it's major or minor before we can proceed to ask uh, questions. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm fine with that process. I just wanted to ask more about um, follow up on on Mr. Luan's <clears throat> um, remarks regarding conditions that would be put upon it. But I can wait to ask that question. Yeah, because I think it because it, if it's major, then it you know we don't have anything to deliberate basically. So yeah, Commissioner Koto. I am sorry if if model motions were sent out, I did not see them, but I'm comfortable uh, moving forward considering this is a minor revision based on the standards outlined in Mr. Lawan's memo. Agree with that. All right, so um, moved by um, Commissioner Coteau, supported by Commissioner Holland that this is a minor um, site uh, PUD amendment. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, Secretary Chang, will you call a roll call vote on the motion, please? Yes. Holland? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sharma? Yes. Corteau? Yes. Hyde? Yes. Chang, yes. Culbertson? Yes. Okay, passes 7 0 as a minor. Okay, minor. so now we'll open it up for questions of either the applicant or uh, Mr. Luan. So, uh, Commissioner Moore. Thank you. Um, so, Doug, I guess I was following your remarks. Um, some of the, the one condition that you thought that we should consider is that. Um, there's no yard behind Mr. Prisson's property. Did you have any other ideas about conditions that we should consider? Um, I think the I think the open space is a good one. That that there's no home uh, directly behind this site, so it's somewhat unique in that regard. And then I think the um, applicant's uh, statement about the. Uh, you know, the property line is not parallel to the back of their house is another uh, kind of unique circumstance, kind of like the Zoning Board of Appeals. You want to be able to assign some unique characteristics to a, uh, to a request so that you're not setting just a blanket precedent. So the, 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 and then the elevation change, perhaps the applicant can expand a little bit about that. Commissioner Hyde. Yes, I also believe that the elevation change caused a lot of this, and we should include that in any uh, any um, uh, motion that would allow this, in that it causes it, it the stairway itself is going to be taking up a lot of space, and and eating up the the easement 
setback as well. So I think having it be ground level causes uh, it is, is both a cause and a reason to approve it. And we should include that in the motion. Thank you, Commissioner Chang. Yeah, I just had a couple questions on the actual trail woods development. How many homes are out there? And do we anticipate any additional homes coming in for this type of request for say a, a patio? Um, I, I don't have the total number. It's several hundred out there. Um, this is the first one that we've had that I'm aware of. Um, so, I mean, I, I would anticipate more, maybe not this exact kind of request, but just to, because there's so many homes, there's going to be some circumstance that's going to come up. But I believe this, this is um, the first one that I can remember that's come before us. I only ask because if we get started in several of these, if there's a way that we could maybe just amend the PUD that would allow patios at grade structures, that would just, we'd allow them in the rear setback. That way we could, if they're going to come in continuously. But if this is the first one, I guess we'll take a wait and see. Any other questions? Commissioner Holland. I believe Commissioner Cortell has been waiting, so I'll wait. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Cortell. Thank you. So I had a question about the two, it looks like it's at least a two foot, maybe about a two and a half foot slope that the, the patio is going to go over. And part of this question is for the applicant about what your stormwater management plan is. And part of the question is for Mr. Luan about you know, that's an increase of stormwater of, of impervious surface in this area. I don't know what the overall plan for trail woods is in terms of handling their stormwater management, but I would be a little bit wary about setting a precedent to keep increasing um, impervious surface if, if these are going to come up frequently. So I wonder if I could both get from the applicant uh, the plan for managing that stormwater and from Mr. Luan, what the overall plan for trail woods is. Um, yeah, that's actually a really good question. and something that I don't know if I've um, totally thought through. Um, I, would, I would say that, you know, the patio would be built uh, not at the same not at the same grade that the uh, backyard slopes down um, on my property, but at a very slight angle. So um, I think it's something like one or two inches every ten feet, or or some. I don't know what the, the exact measurement is. Um, and so that I would imagine that would account for. Um, what you are asking, but I honestly, I'm, you know, somewhat speaking out of turn. I, I, I would need to look more into this and give that one more thought. Yeah, I could, um, you know, I, in just looking at this plan, it, two things, one, you know, obviously there's a whole stormwater management system that was approved as part of trail woods. Um, and it appears that this patio will simply sheet flow into the open space. Uh, however, um, I could, I did not have OHM review this. I mean, it's a patio. They, they could install a different kind of patio that would probably meet the 10 foot setback or the 10 foot encroachment and we wouldn't, you know, they would just get approved. However, that being said, um, I certainly could you know, before they construct it, have OHM take a look at it, just to make sure it's not going to cause any cause any problems. I think that'd be a good idea. I'm up next. Commissioner Holland and then Commissioner Hyde. I have some uh, questions for the for the applicant. Um, I see that the elevation of the finished floor is 893, and the top of the wall is 891.7. That's that's uh, a drop of about 14 inches, I guess. Um, I got that right. Yeah. Um, and then, the, then it continues to slope away. What's the, what's the finished elevation of your patio? 
Are you going to raise, are you going to raise the earth at the outside of the patio or are you going to cut the earth at the inside of the patio next to the house? I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I'd have to talk with, with Lotus. Okay. It, it's sort of a substantial, to me, it's for, for the type of thing we're doing, it's, it's uh, cause you're the edge of your patio is at 887 mm -hmm. and you know, the, the, uh, the, the house is at, at like 889. So that's a two foot, I, I'm saying it's probably a two foot fall, maybe a foot and a half. Um, and I know you don't want to pitch a patio at that kind of pitch, make a little yeah. skateboard thing. Right. So um, that, that, I think that needs to be, be figured out. And, and um, in uh, Commissioner Corto's question about stormwater, I see that this, the, uh, the sump pump discharges to daylight. Now, I don't know if it was planned for that or if there was supposed to be infiltration as it swept across the grass before it got to the, to the stormwater. Um, typically, it's not going to make much of a, a difference. But uh, for instance, um, just some, some real s simple calculations is that that's like 30 or let's say a nine by 30 area of a, of a patio, uh, non-permeable is 270 square feet. And that creates about um, um, a substantial amount. It's like 157 gallons of, of water in a one inch rainfall. And whether that's handled by some type of a stormwater management plan or whatever, or some kind of a dry well or, or how it's handled. But I think, um, um, in the future, particularly when we get these in, we need to, as, as, a, as a, this was a problem when I was on Zoning Board of Appeals too, is that the, the plans quite often hadn't been thought through as far as grading, which kind of can kind of move them from being minor to being um, a big minor, you know? So um, I, I do have that concern. Um, have the, has the adjacent neighbor been, been uh, informed in Unit 51? of what your plan is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've chatted okay. with both of my neighbors, both sides. So the big question then for, for me is, are you elevating the patio above the existing grade? Um, yeah. I, so uh, honestly, I, I have to chat with, with the folks who I'm working with to find out. I don't, I don't know if I have a preference either way. So I'm happy to do uh, what makes best sense uh for the for this purpose you'll probably say splitting the difference which means you don't have a lot of dirt to remove or add so okay those are my questions commissioner hyde thank you um for the applicant it, when i was looking at your plan what it appeared to me was that your patio were pavers and typically the pavers over sand with gaps between them, it allows a lot of ingress of water. And what I don't see, and I don't believe you have in the drawing, uh, is, a, is a wall, a retaining wall for the outer edges. I assumed that you're four, about four foot down from the house to the patio, just counting the number of steps. So taking a seven inch riser as a standard, uh, you would end up four foot down. And, and that would also let the outer edge of your patio be slightly above grade, allowing you to put a retaining or requiring actually you to put a retaining wall. And that in itself would help keep runoff from just rushing into the yard. Mm. Um, all in all, a raised, slightly raised patio with pavers could retain the water and might be the answer to what you need to do. Sure. I say might, it would have to be looked at in detail. So that, that makes sense, but if that were executed, it's gonna take a retaining wall off the corner of the house by the the lead, in other words, if you were to it set your to top yeah. your patio at 887 and a half or 888, you're going to have to have some kind of retaining wall where it's 889 or, 8, or 890. Okay. I'm just wondering uh, um, if this is could be handled administratively 
or if we're going to have to wait for them to come back with a, um, a plan. I do have a couple follow-up questions, um, and and that is, um, it appears that there's quite a bit of room um, if you go west, as opposed to you, where you have your planting bed and the the other area. Could you uh, elaborate on why um, you chose to go in this direction as opposed yeah. to reversing it? Yeah, the main reason is um, to that direction. Um, is our fireplace and it gets quite hot on the outside and uh, it juts out and there's some pieces of like equipment that that are for the fireplace. I wouldn't, I just don't want to have my son near that area. I realize we're not going to have the fireplace on when we are uh, outside on the patio. Um, we also have uh, the vent for our dryer that goes out right there. So there's always a lot of steam and smoke coming out from that way. It's just doesn't seem like the right place to have a, like a, a patio for entertaining purposes. And that's actually part of the reason why we wanted to put the plant bed there was because they could kind of obscure some of that stuff as well. Okay. And were you planning on it being uh, uh, pavers or uh, concrete? Pavers. Any other uh, questions of the applicant or Mr. Luan? Commissioner Carto. Thank you. Mr. Luan, this raises for me just the bigger question of when we approve a PUD and we look at the site plans that a developer is proposing. I mean, it seems like this is an issue of the way they angled the house, the way they put some of the you know, essential structures that that that's making it really hard for for residents to potentially put in amenities like a patio. Are are there ways in which we should be um, considering that in the PUD process to require developers to give a little bit more thought to their site plan design? I mean, we, yes, I mean, we, we do ask, it's not uncommon for us to ask for deck locations for, for homes, particularly on tighter lots. Um, but even if we do ask, you know, we have, we have a building envelope, we have a 10 foot encroachment permitted. And um, th there's, there's always going to be some you know, odd circumstance that comes up. And that, that's why we have this process of major and minor amendment. We try to plan for and make sure that we don't have to do things like this, but some, you know, this is why there is the process. And in this particular case, they're proposing something that just doesn't fit. So then we have to ask kind of as Chairperson Culbertson, is this simply the desire of the applicant or could they make another design fit, you know, based on what was approved previously. So, I mean, that's really where we're at. Is there, is there some other design that could fit uh, better here than what the applicant's proposing? Or is this, you know, that's always a question we ask with, with the variance, you know, is have all the alternatives been explored? Um, you know, aside from the stormwater and everything else, uh, you know, I think I think your comment is a good one, as well as Chairperson Culbertson's comment is a good one about alternatives, basically, that that would meet what was initially approved here. And I guess one other follow up question was whether you looked at even directing the stairs along, um, going east along, so that they followed the house as opposed to projecting out and then you know, wrapping the deck around so it wouldn't have to project so far into the setback. Um, yeah, I did actually consider that. Um, that's really just an issue of flow and openness. And, you know, the reason I, you know, the goal for my patio, you know, would be for it to be inviting. And I feel like having the stairs not go right out makes it a little 
less inviting. Um, and then again, this is to the point about features that are getting in the way of each other. I have a gas stub that's built in on the right side of my uh, built that comes out of the right side of my house there uh, where the stairs would end if it went along parallel to the house. Um, for a grill hookup and again so like that gets in the way of that so it just I'm I'm trying to think of alternatives I am um, haven't quite found something that is totally satisfying yeah and I, I would I would just add and I don't you know I don't mean to tank this request but you know one of the other things that we ask for or one of the things that, the, that if this was a variance, I know it's not a variance, it's a PUD, but one of the other things we always look at for variance is if the request is self-created. So that kind of gets to Commissioner Corteau's comment also, is if the house is placed in such a way and the features are placed in such a way to cause that that is causing the problem, um, a variance is not supposed to be granted if this was a zoning variance. Now, I know this is a PUD amendment, not exactly the same thing, but, you know, the fact that what the applicant's talking about are self-created issues and the fact that there may be alternatives, I think, should be uh, considered by the Planning Commission. Commissioner Chang. The, the petitioner uh, mentioned that you did contact the neighbors to the east and the west, but do they support the layout? Yeah, they don't have a problem. Okay. With it. Yeah, they yeah. are. They're totally okay with it because, um, I mean, it's primarily a question for um, one side more than the other, right. obviously. Um, and if you were to draw an imaginary line of our setbacks that um are between our houses it does the patio does not cross that setback if you just continue that line on so it wouldn't they said it's not an issue for them anyway the, the biggest concern i have is really the the drainage nuisance is that what's going to happen if there's water that's ponding either on the east property line because they look like they're a little lower than your your property line or even in the open space because that's what community area so um, how would we address, you know, ponding water on those sites that's created by the, the patio? Otherwise, I, you know, I, I can, I could support this, but it's really, what are we doing with the drainage? Hmm. How is that going to be addressed if it's becoming a nuisance? Uh, I'm sorry, are you asking me specifically that question or is that a rhetorical? Well, yeah, kind of both. I'm wondering if it were built, <laughs> You know what kind of solution it sounds like possibly retaining walls but then where you're going to put up retaining walls around kind of your north and, and east property lines or is that and is that then going to cause a detriment are you going to start flooding your own yard or it starts to take the water to your other neighbor's property the way it's designed um you know that's that's really the, the big issue i have is just is there is it going to create any type of nuisances for even the open space or the neighbors no matter how we design it Mr. Hyde. Just a question for the applicant based off of what uh, Commissioner Chang has been asking. Is this, did you say that you were working with Lotus Design? Indeed. Perhaps what we should do here is give the uh, applicant some instructions and wait to approve this after we see plans and see how some of the stormwater management issues might be taken up rather than try to direct them in a meeting, you know? So I, I'm just making a suggestion that we do wait and see what the engineering drawings look like. Commissioner Holland. So for me, I guess I'm, I'm seeing a, a case of function following form. And I, I get the impression that maybe the designer, when they designed this, just just want to do something really cool and and followed what the what the uh, homeowner wanted. 
And I know having said on a ZBA before that that one of the questions uh, that usually came up was, is it are they doing the minimal the minimal amount necessary to accomplish their goal? And you know, to me, it's this is sort of just this is uh, all. Um, that's that's not being taken into account, I guess. Um, and then again, there is the stormwater issue. But uh, you know, it's it's really cool. I really like it, but it doesn't mean that, that it won't get us in in trouble as far you know create problems as far as future requests for minor amendments. Other thoughts? Would the chair entertain a motion? Um, I would just would say what the motion is in this case everybody's concerned. I would um, um, make a motion if, um, to maybe we could table this issue and have the applicant and their designer come back to us with what with a little bit more. Uh, detail about some of the issues that have been raised in the meeting tonight. And and those issues would be delineating uh, the extent of a retaining the retaining how to deal with the stormwater um, other elevation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Commissioner and also, uh, and maybe one other issue would be exploring the extent to which they could uh, design the space to stay within the 10 foot allowable setback. Or nine yeah. foot encroachment, Sorry, I believe. Nine. Yeah. Thank you. It, yeah, but then uh, they would have yeah, to come so, back. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting because they're more out than in. That's kind of what I noticed. Mr. Luan. Yeah, and I would agree with those conditions with the, the um, with the clarification that you know alter any alternatives be shown that would be maybe not you know of course conforming would be great but maybe more can you know an alternative that might be more conforming than they're than they're providing. So just some alternatives other than I think Commissioner Holland, I think Commissioner Holland's point was. You know, this is what's presented. It sounds like from the applicant that they've thought of other things, but it would be good for the planning commission to see what those other things were that they've that they've discussed. Those conditions, I would second the motion to table. Okay, we have a um, um, a motion to table. Um, wanting to get uh, more detail from the applicants uh, around the, the grade of the patio, um, extent of any retaining, uh, how stormwater will be managed, and any alternatives that might be more conforming. Is and the drawings, if possible, that could answer some of these questions, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, the motion made by Commissioner Moore and supported by Commissioner Hyde. Is there further discussion? We'll have a, a roll call vote for uh, tabling. Commissioner Hyde. Yes. Commissioner Corteau. Yes. Commissioner Holland. Yes. Commissioner Moore. Yes. Commissioner Chang. Yes. Commissioner Sharma. Yes. Commissioner Culbertson. Yes. All right. Motion is tabled. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Mr. Person. 
All right, we are uh, moving on to our second item of new business, which is the special events ordinance. Mr. Luan. Um, yes, this is um, this is an ordinance that came about. Let me grab my file here. That came about um, actually in 2014. Uh, that was in front of the Planning Commission. And its origins were, were in a way similar to the origins of um, tonight's, uh, why this is back on the agenda for tonight, is um, back in 2014, we had a request from the Knights of Columbus to do a carnival on the property that they own on Dexter Ann Arbor Road. Oh, yeah. And uh, we had no mechanism to allow uh, the carnival. And so we, uh, we embarked upon developing a special events ordinance that would have in some form allowed this carnival to take place. Maybe not that particular year, because I think we already missed the deadline, but maybe the following year. And uh, so the planning commission uh, put together pretty much the draft that you see in front of you. I made some changes to it. Um, it got to the township board and I, the township board just didn't uh, want to move, move it forward. And I think, you know, I think primarily because the whole issue of the carnival at the Knights of Columbus property went away. So it was sort of just, uh, wasn't, it wasn't uh, urgent anymore. And so they just didn't want to deal with, uh, with this ordinance, so it just kind of died back in 2014. Well, fast forward to today, and uh, as many of you probably know, there was a request, or not a request, there was there was discussion that the Dexter Days uh, Festival was gonna take, take place at the, um, I believe it's the American Legion Hall on uh, uh, Dexter Chelsea Road. And, um, Similar situation, we, we found out that was going to happen. Uh, the township supervisor got in contact with uh, the folks who were organizing Dexter Days, told them, you know, that we don't have an ordinance. Um, I provided some input and uh, indicated that any kind of big event like that, because it's not contained in our current zoning ordinance, we'd have no option except to deny it. And um, so this, uh, I, I provided the, the 2014 draft to um, Supervisor Hathaway. He put this on a township board agenda. It was discussed briefly at the township board agenda. Um, perhaps uh, Commissioner Corto can provide any input on that. I was, I, I was, in, I was in that meeting actually as well. Um, the township board asked that um, this be brought up again in front of the planning commission, suggested a few changes and for me to take a look at it to see if there's anything more that could be done. Um, and that's the copy that's in your packet, the April 29th um, version. And wherever you see, you know, red, um, uh, uh, or, you know, uh, underlined, I think it's, mine is red. I don't know what color yours is, but um, wherever you see the, the underlined red is areas that I've, I've added since this thing went to the township board back in 2014. So the, the essence of the ordinance is that this would, would allow uh, uh, special events. We, we have it divided into two types of special events. We have uh, major events and minor events. Um, uh, major events require a public hearing and a, uh, an approval by the township board. Um, those, are, those are events that have over um, 100 or 150 or more people would be considered a major event that would have to be, that would have to have a public hearing and then go in front of the township board. Anything under 150, the way the ordinance is written could be reviewed administratively by the township. And would not have to go and would not have to have a public hearing. Um, uh, so that is kind of the gist. That's the gist of the ordinance. Um, um, 
this would be allowed in any the way the way this is written it would be allowed in any zoning district um, there's a limitation to the number of events that a specific property could have per year we would be allowing no more than two events per year maximum um, the other thing to uh, realize a uh, little nuance is that this is a standalone ordinance. It's not part of the zoning ordinance. So there are not the same kind of uh, public hearing requirements for just the, the ordinance itself. In fact, if I'm not saying the planning commission will, but if the planning commission was okay with the ordinance as, is, as it's written, it would go right onto the township board. There's no, because this is not a zoning ordinance, there's no requirement for the township board or planning commission to hold a, a public hearing it would go directly onto the township board uh, for their action. So um, uh, that is, um, that's kind of a summary and uh, hope, hopefully you had the chance to uh, read through the language and I will try to um, answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Lon. Do we have, a, do you, um, Commissioner Coteau, do you have anything to add? Uh, just a couple of minor points. So one subject of discussion before the board was distinguishing between major and minor events and some concerns around that. Mr. Luan, I wonder if you might explain that a little bit more just because that was a big issue of concern. And, and then a, a second question I have, although this wasn't a board question, is about um, the times proposed here, the end time of 11 o'clock, given the concerns we have around party barns and noise after 10, I wonder whether we might consider that. Um, and, and just my final note would be, I mean, I think the board is interested in having this ordinance so that it is possible for us to have events. They didn't wanna be rushed into having to approve something just for some possible application. So they, wanted the planning commission to take the time to consider whether you know there were any changes in language needed since it it was you know it's been nearly seven years since it was done before so i think that the board is interested in moving forward in a thoughtful way yeah, yeah i think the discussion around the major and the minor amendment had something to do with the approval process and who who approves it. And as I said, that like larger, anything, uh, a major amendment, not only is 150 people, but even if it's less than 150, if it's more than one day, um, that's also considered a major amendment. But um, just to be clear, uh, there, was, there was discussion about, you know, township board approving the major amendments and then uh, you know, the zoning administrator having the authority to review minor amendments. So I think there is some concern about a single person approving a, a minor uh, special event. Um, and then the other thing that was sort of in revolt, that, that was sort of uh, uh, associated with this was that, you know, of course, everyone wants to make sure that um, these don't, that, that you know, a major or minor event could not be construed as a private party on private property, like a, you know, like a graduation party or something like that. And the ordinance, uh, this ordinance on top of page two specifically indicates that, you know, private parties are not subject to this ordinance. So if you had a graduation party or well, any kind of party really, that was part of your home, just like you do now, you know, you don't have to come to Sio Township. Um, however, if you're a business and you're doing, you know, a sidewalk sale or who knows what, or some kind of event um, or a larger event like the Knights of Columbus wanted to do years ago or Dexter Days wanted to do recently, um, then you, you would have to apply for these provisions. So th those are the, kind of, that's what I remembered. And I, I think that's what I had um, in my notes from, uh, that was April 13th, I think we discussed this. So that was, uh, that, that, that was the comment, that, that's the notes I had. A question for you, Doug, about this. What would be, 
let's say um, one of the larger subdivisions wanted to do a block party or 4th of July parade or something like that um, within their subdivision, um, you know, that would be over 150 people if they had 100 lots in it. Um, even if they had 50 lots, it'd probably be over 150 pe people. Would that then require a public hearing? Yes. Well, if it's over 150, yes. In fact, the, the, the major amendment or the, getting my PUD mixed up with the, <laughs> the uh, uh, major special event, uh, the definition of major special events um, specifically mentions black parties. So yes, if it was a large black party, they would have to come in for a permit um, uh, from the township. If they knew it was gonna be over 150 people, then there would have to be a public hearing and all that sort of thing. So. I don't know how much of that goes on in the township right now, um, but it, it would require it would require a, a permit. Look, how many people are we expecting for this particular event again? Um, well, the the event they canceled it, by the way. So the the mm -hmm. event that kind of prompted this was Dexter Days, and it was canceled. And, um, you know, it, it's a pretty major event. It, it's hundreds of people. Hundreds of people, event. right. Yeah. You know, hundreds and hundreds, probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but from what I understand, they've decided to cancel this year. So to, to Commissioner Corteau's point, we're not under rush. We're not rushed to do this. We can make changes and consider it and debate it and make sure it's what, you know, we're all comfortable with before it goes on to back to the township board. Commissioner Carteau. Mr. Lawan, do you have other townships that you work with that have a special events ordinance and, and does that experience inform how you can anticipate this might be used or what issues and challenges might arise? Um, I only have one community that I know of that this is an issue, not even an issue. They have, they have language that allows, uh, the, you know, special events and um, it's very seldom used. Um, and I don't know of any, I'm not aware of problems that it's, that it's caused. So, I mean, I, I could ask, I could ask that question to my staff because, you know, we represent about 70 communities in Southeast Michigan. So I'm sure there's other communities that folks in my office work with that I could kind of pose that question to. Uh, but in my experience, I, I don't have experience that this, that this has caused any issue that we should be aware of. I guess I just have a problem regulating block parties. I don't know. No, it, it, it just seems like a little overreach, but maybe others don't see that. Well, I know, I know in, in, in most, and I know, you know, Sio is not a city, but in most uh, cities, you do have to get a permit from the city to do a block party. Now, maybe it's not a public hearing in front of the township board, uh, but you know, most communities that allow block parties, you know, they'll get a city permit, they'll block the street off, you know, the police are aware of it. You know, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's kind of, a, it, so this would not be unusual to regulate block parties. Other commissioners have any, any questions or thoughts? Commissioner Chang. I guess I'm still slightly confused. I've been reading the ordinance over and over. Since, since there's a proposed special meeting at Heron Farms, are we saying they can't have, if let's say they were, they were denied by the special event, could they still, since they're some type of probably agricultural zoning, could they have a large, one large event and two smaller events held out there or not? I was. Yeah, well, the ordinance, um, indicates that 
if if it's a use allowed with the underlying zoning, uh, it's you know you don't obviously you don't have to get like for example the, uh, the if if Heron Farms was approved as a special land use, they would not have to do this. They would not have to go through this. They're just approved. They they they're good to go. If if they weren't, in theory, they could apply for only a maximum of two, and it would be only one large event per year, one small, you know, one, one large, one small, and that would be it for the entire year for piece of property. So yes, they could, if they were denied the special use that we're asking them, or they're asking us for, they could still apply as a special event. Um, but it only allows two max, so it really wouldn't. Um, it really wouldn't do what they're intending. You know, they're they're intending more of an operation out there. Right. Um, so, but you know, and, and it also doesn't impact like American Legion, of course, has events with more than 150 people, but those are all indoors. You know, those are weddings and things like that. And this ordinance also, you know, uh, uh, exempts operations it doesn't matter how many people as long as it's indoors and it's a use permitted in that zoning district so for the american legion they've been doing that forever and um you know we, we would never even question it you know same with the knights of columbus i guess so uh you have uh -huh. Oh, thank you. Uh, Doug, you have mentioned in section 7.4, redlined number of events. I'm trying to understand. Is that the number of events an issue? That is that why you redlined it? Number of what? No, I, that's, that's new. That language is new from the last, from 2014. And I, I wanted to, uh, I added this language. Um, uh, to, to, to limit the number because, you know, a special event, we don't want this to become an event every weekend. And so, you know, if it was every weekend, they could apply to be under our, in the ag district, you know, they could apply like Heron Farms is doing as a, as a, you know, event barn under the, under the ag commercial zoning special land use, which is a okay. whole nother ball game. We just wanted to allow you know, this ordinance would allow once or twice a year, one large, one small, or two small on a specific piece of property, like the Knights of Columbus, like, you know, one of these other organizations. So this is, you know, totally different than our agricultural commercial zoning district in the, in the, in the agricultural zone that requires that to be a special land use. This is this is really a one-time thing, one time per year. And I would expect, you know, I, I, you know, I guess I don't know what to expect, but I, I wouldn't expect this to even happen every year. You know, this, this would hopefully be something that only happens every once in a while on a piece of property. But put it this way, I mean, maybe these events have happened over the years here in Sio Township, but I don't remember I don't remember them ever happening in Sio Township. <laughs> I, you know, I think maybe, I guess we have a couple of schools too, and I like ice cream socials, you know, it, you know, outdoor kind of school events, uh, sporting yeah. events. I, I don't know if we're getting into it. it it's kind of tough of, uh, you know, if you enforce it or you don't enforce it because it's a school, you know? Yeah, I, that would probably be covered under uses customarily associated with the underlying zoning designation. Okay. I mean, we could we could expand upon that a little bit, um, but you know, we're not including garage sales, estate sales, auctions, private parties, or or similar customary uses. So, you know, that's under the exemption of number three. So I would, you know, if someone from a school approached me and said, "Hey, do I need a special events permit for an ice cream social?" You know, there's got to be a little discretion on the part of the zoning administrator, and I would just, uh, to me, I would say that's a, a, a use customarily associated with the school. So you might say a, a school or church function. I don't, 
you know, yes. I could yeah, 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 yeah. and that might want to be more, if you can put it in black and white. Yeah, I can, I can try that. Uh, Commissioner Coto, Just <clears throat> expanding on that. I, I mean, things like the Russian Orthodox Church has their festival, the Greek Orthodox, the Greek Church has their festival. I, I think those happen in, I, aren't, aren't both of those churches in Sayo? No, the Greek I, Orthodox is in Lima. Or, uh, oh, uh, that's Lodi. just over, yeah. that's on the, okay. Yes. But what about the Russian Orthodox Church? They had a... I don't think that's in Sayo. That's too far west, okay. Yeah. However, I was just thinking if, about the church festival thing because that's another big source of events. Yeah. However, if if that church, if the Russian Earth, if the Greek Orthodox was in Sayo, that would clearly, I, I think, I think that's above and beyond a typical event that would be associated with the church. I mean, that's a that's a basically a carnival. So in the, in that case, you know, in that case, we would under these provisions. If it came to my attention as owning administrator, you know, we I would require them to get a permit, and likely, and because of the number, it would have to go to the township board. Commissioner Hyde. Oh, sorry about that delay. Thank you. Uh, how would an event like the Ann Arbor Dexter Run that goes through our area? Would that need a, a special event permit from us to allow it to occur? Um, it's not really on, I don't know how that event works. Is that, is there a, um, I mean, a, it, it, a private club, I think runs it, but you know, it's open to the public. And, yeah, and it I mean, does it, take it, place in Sayo. Yeah, it certainly it certainly could. Um, and I know I think I think I saw on the agenda the board agenda for tomorrow that that's on the that's on their agenda anyway it because is. they're so they get some kind of approval now from the township board. But it would be a permit approval if this goes through. Some sort of approval right now. I think the the approval is for the road closures. That that that's what the board is considering. And police presence. Right. Other commissioners? Commissioner Holland. I think Commissioner Moore was ahead of me. So go ahead. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Moore, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Um, how would retirement parties fit into the scheme of events? Um, if, Let's if say my, you had 150 I... people at your retirement party on your property. For your, at your, at, I, I think that would, if, if that was just a, a, you know, private party at someone's house, that would not be covered. That would be exempt from this. Even though it's outside. Let's say it's outside. Exempt from this. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Doug. I'm sorry, I'm gonna turn off my video. I think my, I think my connection's getting a little flaky. Um, uh, that, that because it's at a, 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 we would consider that I. Doug, I think uh, you're breaking up again. Um, but I think what he was trying to say was uh, it, under exceptions number three, where it says private parties, it would okay. fall under that. Yes. Yes, that was that. Yes. Okay, that was all I so, wanted to ask. So, Doug, so the infamous parade of homes party uh, that uh, that has been going on for years, many of them in Sayo, that wouldn't uh, fall under this. 
How does how does that work? It's basically an open house with a VIP party where where they present to their to their membership and other participants. It's just, just a party, but it's a, it's an event. It's not open to the public, but it's like a private party. It'd be similar to a to a retirement party or something like that. So I think. Well, what do you think? Yeah. D d does d does that um, does that go around from house to house to house, or is it one house? Um, both. They start with a with a party uh, at the kickoff, and then then they have basically it probably found their open houses as far as as far as the rest of them, uh, as far as the tours, because it's basically a tour of open houses. Is that true? Yeah, that sounds exempt to me. So I, I guess my con my one concern would be, you know, uh, Commissioner Hyde did bring up the the, the runs, and how. Um, I, I mean, I've been at events like that where, where they have a food truck, you know, and they have, uh, you know, they have a, a, a medical trailer and, and so on. And, and I mean, I just, I mean, that's such a great, great community event. Uh, and it, quite often they're for charity. And they're going to charge them $500. I mean, uh, where are we going to, uh, at least that's, unless I read it wrong, that's what I'm thinking. Is there a way to get around some of this so that some of these, 501c3 fundraisers that aren't, aren't don't have huge impact and our community community uh, benefits yeah the 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 five hundred dollar is just a, a number I came up with after looking at some other similar ordinances the township board could certainly change that or that so yes that that could be changed mm -hmm. Doug, uh, this was this this proposal was approved a few years ago by the Planning Commission, right? Yes. As you say in your letter of 2014, I think. Um, they probably were a little more flexible in the requirements, which you have now made a little more rigid, I think. Uh, from 300 people down to 150 and a few other things. And, and of course, you added some <clears throat> special events criteria as well. I'm asking, maybe I'm asking, I, I mean, so so w what is so wrong about this proposal at this stage, I guess, is my question then. Um, uh, the more I read, read it, I, I find nothing extraordinary about it. Uh, and you have probably made it a, a little more regimented, if that's the right word to use, uh, for good reason, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, and of course, we can benchmark other areas like Commissioner Kautu said a little while ago, but more importantly, what is wrong with this document is my question, I guess. I mean, what, what, what is possibly unfavorable about it? Am I missing the point? Um, well, I think one no? of the issues that was brought up about what's unfair, what it, it is relatively restricted, meaning that any kind of special event. I'm thinking of the Jackson Road, what is it with the cars or whatever, um, that that any kind of special event, fundraiser, whatever, would need to go through this process. And there would right. be, uh, we are also, you know, paying a consultant to review it. Um, and then if it's a larger event, it has to go through a public hearing process. Um, so I think what you're saying is it's pulled a lot of it's pulled a lot of other events in smaller events in is that what you're saying Jan? I, I'm just saying yeah I mean do we it, it seems relatively um, you know somewhat restrictive in that you're you're requiring a, you know small events to go through you know some hoops and and pay a fee. Yeah. I, have, I have to admit I stopped at the end of the ordinance and didn't see the application fee. And that is a new item, uh, I believe, that was added. It's in red. So that I certainly would take exception to based on some of the events that we've come up with. That's all fine. But uh, I guess, uh, is there, oh, I guess, what is the issue with this particular document that we 
find. Do we need it? We need it. <laughs> that, we definitely need it. I mean, that goes without saying. Uh, but my question is, what is so not so right about it? I mean, it's a poor draft in 2014 seems to have done. I mean, well, the, the draft in 2014, basically, um, there was no ordinance and I was there when they were put that together and I sat on the committee that did it, but it was sort of a, a, a 911 call because there were definitely gonna be some traffic issues and some neighborhood issues to have a carnival uh, on, on Dexter and Arbor Road um, where there was a, a hairpin turn and a valley and 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 so on. And, and you know, we kind of put it, put an ordinance together, but I think this this revision has has swept swept in um, a lot of community events as opposed to um, like like a big shindig, like a carnival or or something like that, or like like the Dexter days. Oh, 150 people. Mm -hmm. um, it's not very big. Yeah, Commissioner Carteau. So I'm wondering whether many of these concerns might be addressed by simply returning it back to the 300 person rather than going down to 150, because I think a lot of the kinds of retirement party, block party, those kinds of things would, would be much less likely to qualify. But I did want to get back to address the point about the application fee um, or the permit fee we could certainly consider a scale um, for that. You know, a minor event would have a lower fee than a major event or something like that. But the township is trying to be very consistent across all of our programs now that require a, a permit application and a permit review. We want the fees to cover the cost of having to have a staff review that including you know potentially the zoning compliance officer might be reviewing those minor events and right now the planning commission budget is kind of large and amorphous because not all of our fees are fully covering the services that we offer so i would just offer the insight that if we are going to have a review of these applications, we need to think about a funding mechanism to help support that. Commissioner Hyde. Uh, thank you. With that in mind, uh, referring back to the Dexter Ann Arbor Run event, that would certainly, even if you limited it at 300 or more, it would qualify. So my question is before, I mean, when they're coming before the Board of Trustees, to discuss this, and they're talking about blocking roads and having police presence. Is there a fee that we charge that event already? Is that a normal event fee? That so that this wouldn't be additional. I'd, I'd want to not make a fee on top of a fee if we were already doing that. That's. That's a really good question. I don't know the answer to Mr. Luan. Do you know how something like this, the Dexter Ann Arbor run comes, when that comes before the board, is that undergoing some kind of staff review first? And it, is there some way that we could make sure that it's one unified process? Yeah, well, if this uh, ordinance was adopted um, by the way, I put myself on phone <laughs> so I don't get flake out anymore. Um, if this process was adopted, um, then this would be the process. And there, there, there would be only this fee. That, there would be no other fee from Sio Township. I, I, but I don't know of any other review. I've never reviewed the, the Dexter and Arbor run before. That's always been just in front of the township board. You know, it might also, you know, the Dexter and Arbor run is kind of an odd one because it's not necessarily associated with a specific property you know it, it's on county roads for the most part and so it would be possible to 
you know, I could throw some language in there that indicates that really what, because really what we're trying to do here is regulate things on property, like big events on a property or on multiple pieces of property, like, you know, static events that don't move, where, you know, the, the run is over and start to finish what it's like two hours or something. I mean, it's not that long of an event, is it? Um, yeah, it, it, yeah, they, it's a they do quick... have like three or four. They have the half marathon, the 10K, the fun walk, the 5K. So it, it probably does vary a little longer, you know, from 7 a.m. to noon, probably when they open the streets. Yeah, it's about back, a right? half day. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, uh, it's not necessarily associated with a piece of property, though. You know, it's, it's a... So that, that could be a way to, uh, you know, I could throw some language in there that that might indicate, you know, maybe make an exemption of, of events that occur within a, you know, the road right of way or something like that. Because really, I mean, that's going to be a road commission permit to a great degree anyway, not, not, not side of township. And, and that would be the cruising, the Jackson Road cruise too, would be. Right. How, how about events that are less than six hours? I mean, that's, it sounds like that's the, uh... That's one of the criteria that, that some of these fall under is events that are like a half a day. And if they need road closures and stuff, I think the the, uh, the sheriff is the one that probably sends them a bill for that. So, I mean, that would cover retirement parties, graduation parties, and so on, if it was like six hours or less. Are you suggesting like an exemption for that? I'm suggesting that we should look at it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I haven't had a lot of time to think about it, but it seems that that's the that's the we keep that's what we're tripping on. Yeah, I, I'm also not sure that we want to go down to 150. I think that's you know it could be six hours or less, or you know under 300 or something like that. You know, some sort of mm -hmm. something that isn't as um, restrictive. And then if you add this, you know, customary, it's, you know, schools, school sports, church. Um, so what about a big grass route in some farmer's field with a rock concert? That would, that's that, only, that's <laughs> only three hours long, right? <laughs> I'm just, I, I think I'm, I would, I'm a what I, if guy. Yeah, I would, I would cover that. We, we've actually had okay. those before. Okay. I mean, I just. Yeah, I mean, you could also say, you know, say if there's any amplification of. of yeah, I was going to say you can have uh, <laughs> quite a bit of noise even with ten people in a rock band. <laughs> That's a garage band. <laughs> well, well, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and rock band. That's one of the reasons. That, Eleven o'clock. <laughs> you know, Dan. That's one of the reasons they put me on ZOA because having been in the development business, in the building business, it's like, well, how are we going to get around that ordinance, and how are we going to get around this ordinance, and I'd always go, well. We need to plug this hole. We need to plug that hole. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure we. I'm not. I'm not sure we. I don't know that I like the six-hour exemption because you can have. You can still have a lot. Of, you could cause a lot of problems in six hours if it's a big event and you're you, you're plugging up the roads and you know there's still there's still all the issues that are raised in this ordinance like you know sewage and porta potties and police and traffic. I mean, six hours is a long time. Those, are, those could still come up in six hours. Point well taken. Okay, thoughts. Commissioner Chang has something he wants to say. Okay. Commissioner Chang, sorry, I keep going back to the ordinance and. <laughs> yeah, this, I'm not real familiar with special events, but I do know the special events coordinator with the city, and I know the Dexter Ann Arbor run, you know, finishes right on Main Street downtown, and they have the food fair, and they have police, and I can find out more detailed information. But I would agree with Commissioner Corto that that they're not doing that just for charity with all the city services. That all those, you know, forty, fifty dollar fees that runners are signing up for is paying for the street closures, the police and all of the, the services that are being rendered, even the permits. So I have 
myself don't have a problem. I think $500 just to review the for the fees, if that's covering the, the township's costs is great. But I can do a little bit more research with our, the events coordinator with the city and find out how do they, you know, I don't know what the costs are or how they run those things. So I could, I'll send something out to, to the planning commission and, and get more detailed information just for background. Okay. So, um, I mean, do we want to just table this to get more information and, you know, be able to think it through a little bit more? Is that, and there isn't any um, timeline that we're running up against. I would second that. Commissioner Coteau. So I agree with tabling. I wonder whether we could offer some specific guidance for issues to continue considering, and that would be the number of people, considering bumping that back up to 300, um, considering the information that Commissioner Chang finds out from Ann Arbor uh, about their special events. And then I, I did raise, and we haven't had further discussion, but I, I do wonder about setting an end time of 10 p.m. rather than 11 p.m. unless we want to do a weekday weekend kind of breakdown because I really am concerned given the um, pushback that we often get from residents and the concern, not the pushback, but the very real concerns about noise past 10 o'clock that Although I understand this is just a one-time thing, it, it, we, we don't want everybody to feel like at any point their peace might be disturbed after 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, and plus after an event closes, it, you know, it, if it's a 300 person event, it takes a while for it to subside. Okay, any, any other considerations? Um, any of the commissioners want to bring up? The fee, whether we want it to be a sliding scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a few notes. I'll, I'll, I'll take a little crack at amending this with the notes I've got. And we could even do a smaller fee for, um, you know, the smaller events, uh, you know, maybe just make it as a simple zoning compliance fee, which is like, I think $100 for non-residential. So um, maybe we do 500 or or some number, 300, 500 for the large events and, you know, 100 for the small events. We could do that. Okay. All right. You know, uh, you know the required information in this, in this ordinance talks about showing that, you know, the sheriff department's on board, showing that, you know, the, the road commission's on board. So some of that, you know, could likely require, you know, th this is gonna require the sheriff's the issue of costs. You know, if there's, if there has to be someone directing traffic at the entrance, um, you know, the sheriff department's gonna wanna get paid for that. And so that's one of the reports that's required is um, you know that that the sheriff's Depar sheriff's department be considered. Doug, I remember that that when we drafted this, that's the one thing you brought up was do your homework before you come and see us. Understand what your responsibilities are before you come in to say, hey, I want to have a I want to have an event, and I think that's important. That's probably one of the important things about the application, is that people are put on notice of what they're responsible to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so could I have um, a motion to table based on the considerations discussed? I'll take a stab at it. Okay. Commissioner. You want to say something before oh. I took a stab at it? Nope. Commissioner Coteau, you... Thank you, Commissioner Moore. You go for it. I was, I'm glad you stepped forward. Otherwise, I would have felt compelled to have to do it myself. Okay. Um, I move that we table the issue of the special events ordinance review and consider uh, issues of uh, attendee limits. Um, 
fees, um, a, a time to 11 or 10 p.m. Um, Belief. Um, and so I guess that would be fees. I have a couple notes on fees, so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Did I miss anything? And, and, and just and exemptions around churches and schools. And exemptions around churches and schools. And other issues discussed this evening. <laughs> and other issues discussed at this meeting. Second. Okay. Um, moved by Commissioner Moore, support by Commissioner Holland. Any further discussion? Secretary Chang, please do a roll call vote. Okay. For Hi. Tate. Oh, you're on mute, Commissioner Hyde. It sounds left to move. Yeah, I'd hit my space bar, but it didn't work all the time. Yes. Commissioner Corto. Yes. Commissioner Holland. Yes. Commissioner Moore. Yes. Commissioner Chang. Yes. Commissioner Sharma. Yes. And Commissioner Culbertson. Yes. Okay. Tabled. All right. Then uh, we're going to move on to our reports. There is nothing from uh, OHM is not here this evening. Um, uh, Mr. Luan, anything from from you? Uh, no, we're um, you know we we passed along the master plan at our special meeting on Thursday, um, and I will be making those changes uh, this week and uh, hope that that gets on to the township board agenda, I believe on May 24th, uh, so it can be distributed uh, to the adjacent communities. I also um, sent an email to uh, City of Dexter today uh, indicating the discussion that we had, I think it was with Jan, um, about uh, Jan Will, I think, about getting together with them during the 63-day um, review period. Um, and so I'm waiting to hear back from, uh, from them uh, to see when they would like to do that. Um, and, um, you know, nothing more, uh, no, no, nothing else to really report at this time. Thank you. Um, the chair report. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to ask was um, we had we did pass uh, the um, environment forming the environmental task force, and I'm assuming that that's going to you know go on to the um, board of trustees and get formed. And I just wanted to ask uh, if there are any commissioners that knew now that they were interested in being a part of that task force, um, and Commissioner Hyde. Um, did email, email me and expressed an interest. Um, are there other commissioners that are interested in, in participating? I don't see anyone jumping up and down to volunteer, but um, please uh, consider that because we do want, um, you know, uh, I think there were up to three on the task force. Uh, so do give that some consideration. And if there are some questions about how often it's gonna meet and so forth, we don't really know that now. Um, but um, if, if you, if you uh, want to and do consider an interest in it, just send me an email because we will be forming that probably um, this month sometime. Who's on the task force right now, or does it have members? It, it doesn't have members yet. We're recruiting, and also, I guess I would also say, if you know folks that live in the township that have an expertise in sustainability, an interest in sustainability, that um, you know that can represent a broader section of the township, um, that are involved in other, like organizations that would want to be a part of the task force, um, please also, um, uh, you know, uh, forward those names because we are trying to um, recruit from the broader community. All right. Um, a board of trustees. 
So a big issue that the board is considering right now is staffing and administration. Um, and, you know, that also goes along with budget and how we will fund positions. And I think I've mentioned in the past that we're trying to get a handle on the planning commission staffing needs and budget going forward. So if there are people who are interested in weighing in on that discussion that's on the agenda for tomorrow. Uh, a question I would raise, and maybe this is just to close the loop with Mr. Luan and, and Chair Culbertson is we, we do have some questions about making sure that we have a really clear process for getting items that are passed here um, in the planning commission onto the agenda for the for the board of trustees and and I just want to make sure that I clearly understand what role I need to play in making sure things are moving forward like where where the, where the momentum lies for that so if we can continue to to refine that process that would be very helpful for me um, and I think those oh yeah, go ahead Mr. Lawrence Culbertson yeah, I just wanted to respond to that. And um, this, so this was a role that previously was handled by either the supervisor or the township manager, kind of ushering things from the planning commission onto the township board agenda. And um, we were asked a couple of weeks ago by Will to take a look at this. And then uh, the recent emails might have been Friday that Commissioner Corto mentioned this again. And we will, um, I'm working with uh, Laura Kreps from my office, who's done a lot of work here in the township. And she is working with Fran. And so between Laura and Fran, we are trying to come up with a, a strategy um, so that we are, you know, so that we, so that we and that is uh, Fran and the office staff, and then Laura from our office, um, can help usher things through from the planning commission and township board. So we, I talked to Laura about that and we talked to Fran. And so we are, we're working on that right now. We have a, we have a pretty good outline, um, but this, this was one of those tasks that was done by either the supervisor or the manager. So we'll, you know, we have no problem assisting and taking that on. But, but so I just want to let you know, we are working on that. And hopefully we have something to you guys shortly. Commissioner Holland. Sure. So does that indicate that we're not going to have a township manager? I thought that we were looking for a township manager. That is the subject of tomorrow's discussion. Okay. I just, okay. I mean, my observation is it seems uh, a lot more time consuming to be on planning commission without a township manager. So, um, the board Come welcomes tomorrow. anybody's views at at the discussion tomorrow. Yeah, so you can, yeah, and likewise, you can email, you can um, speak at public comment or during, um, uh, are you going to have open public comment with each agenda item or are you going to do just open and, and close? So our, our general policy is to do a general comment at open and close and then with each item for which there is, um, is an action and often for the discussion items, I don't know if we have, if we have particular constraints due to the anticipated interest tomorrow, but in general, we hear it for each item as well as open and close. But I think, Jay, um, because you've been on the Planning Commission so long, I think um, at least a, a correspondence around that would be helpful. See what I can do? OK, thanks. Anything else from the Board of Trustees? I think that's Good. <laughs> okay. all since our last meeting, right? Uh, ZBA, we haven't met. We do have a um, another sign um, uh, request, and that'll be this month. Uh, DDA. A DDA met today and had a lengthy discussion on road improvements as part of the uh, Washtenaw County Road Commission annual local road maintenance fund. 
uh, and um, looking very seriously at having Enterprise Drive uh, um, upgraded, um, trying to do it without a special assessment district. Uh, it's been the SADs in the past. We also discussed the proposed partial donation of the American Brooch property uh, owned by the suburban dealers and uh, came to the conclusion that DDA does not support having a park at that location in the DDA district um, for, for many reasons, including the, the, uh, the uh, decrease in the tax incremental revenues derived by downtown development authority. Uh, we approved a brownfield grant for 78 Jackson Plaza. Basically the grant was approved by the state uh, we're going to act as a fiscal agent for uh, it's the uh, Holmes Brewery site on on, uh, on um, Jackson Plaza, and uh, we're in the process of putting together a DDA master plan. Uh, the bus shelters are in progress and they're under discussion some some more as far as executing uh, the completion of that project. Um, that's pretty much the paid our bills and talked about, oh, we talked about uh, getting rid of it. If you have any, if you have any feelings about the big brown signs along the Jackson Boulevard that used to have address numbers on them, yeah. the discussion is, do we re remove them? Do we pay to have them uh, redone? Uh, and are they really useful for now that we're in the day, days of Google Maps? Any questions? I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Coteau. Just to comment on those last, that last point, I actually really <laughs> use those signs all the time um, to, to decide where I'm supposed to turn. <laughs> so, so the question is, you know, for me, since the numbers are gone, we should recondition them to say, uh, uh, turn here for, to go to Parkland Plaza or turn here to go to, you know, Zebra, Zebra Road next left or, or Zebra Road next next cross street or, or whatever, and maybe actually put directions on, but you like the numbers, eh? If I'm looking for a specific address, yes. Although I would be open to changing it to landmarks like you're suggesting. I just, I'm just saying, I think they're helpful. It's helpful to have some signposting. I would be a little bit concerned about having them go away altogether because I think the confusion of having to decide where you turn when would be amplified with no signage whatsoever. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll I'll make that known, but it's I, I, it would be between twenty and thirty thousand dollars to to play with those signs. So wow. um, I will pass that along, and, and because it, it's helpful, because you know we know the boulevard, so so you know it's the, the, we don't really use them, so it's nice to have some input. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't think uh, the road commission advisory committee is meeting yet, is it, uh, Commissioner Sharma? I don't have an invite. Okay. LPC. The LPC has not met as a full body since we last met. Um, although a smaller, the leadership team met with the county to continue the discussion about agricultural land preservation and how to best partner. And I, I think based on that discussion, the additional material that we added to the master plan should be adequate. And I've requested that our consultant, Barry Lonick, um, review that again in the revised draft of the master plan to make sure that we feel like the language that, that Mr. Luan added, thank you so much, um, that, that that's gonna cover all the concerns. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, ZOA. No. No, nothing to report. We haven't met yet. Okay. Get ready. Um, parks and Rec. Okay. The, the Parks uh, Committee has selected two interns for this summer, and the supervisor has offered and received their acceptance. So we are, we're going to have Parks uh, is set up to have a park management plan for I believe two parks this summer. So by fall, we should have a report out, both verbal and written. And I believe that those will be presented to 
the parks and possibly to the board of trustees. So that's the way we're going to be doing it. And I, I, we're really excited that we're gonna have that. The other thing I wanted to report was that we also are considering the issue of the Jackson Road um, park land donation that was part of the Subaru, or the, um, no, I can't recall what the name of the. Yeah, just uh, suburban dealership. Yeah. Suburban, that's what it was. So uh, although we haven't written it up yet and we plan on having a formal discussion and write up, we are more generally in favor of having a green space, even if it's just an island that would help migratory animals, whatever, people, uh, although I see the DDA's input is critical too. So that's, that's what we're going to be putting in for that. Okay, uh, TAP. We will be meeting this Wednesday, which is in conflict with the tour out at Heron Farm. So <laughs> I, I guess you'll either see me or you won't see me. I still got to figure that part out. Um, then we have uh, Julia Roberts, Roberts from WAVE will be making a presentation at TAP and discussing more sidewalk gap infill. Okay, great. Uh, here in River Watershed Council. Um, I don't have anything more to add since the input that I gave on last Thursday's meeting. Great. All right. And there are still two um, sets of minutes that are pending. We're going to try and um, see if we can't get the minutes done within, uh, you know, that eight days that they're supposed to be done. So we'll keep working on that. Commissioner Coteau. Just a question of procedure again for how things need to pass to the Board of Trustees. Since the task force on sustainability is on one of those minutes and we would like to get that on to the May 25th BOT meeting. Are we going to have an opportunity to approve those minutes before that meeting? Good question. Um, I'll put in, let's see, because we don't meet. Uh, well, I think you, I think you guys are meeting the, the day before. The 24th. Yeah. So, I mean, we could work with, assuming that the minutes will be done, um, you know, we could work with Will with the agenda and just tentatively put it on, assuming that the, you know, giving the Given the township board member draft minutes, but assuming the planning commission is going to approve them the day before, I mean, we could we could work it like that. Okay. All right, and then hopefully we'll get we'll get caught up. So we're we're if that will well, just because waiting another two weeks for the following board meeting would would really start to slow the process down. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you for noting that. All right. Um, anything else to come before the Planning Commission? Seeing nothing, um, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. By Commissioner Moore, supported by Commissioner Carteau uh, to adjourn. Uh, Commissioner Chang, will you do a roll call vote, please? Alan. I think you have to repeat it. There was a Commissioner Holland. Yes. Moore. Yes. Sharma. Yes. Corto. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Chang. Yes. Culbertson. Yes. Okay. And we're adjourned at eight fifty nine. That's a first for us. Dang. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everyone. Great. Good really night. made it. <laughs> Good night. Good soon. Way to go. <laughs> Take care.